All right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Sorry about the delay. We were having a little technical. I'm the only ice cream person in the building right now. <laughs> That's my tea problem, right? <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, was it properly posted? All right. Um, we have a eight or nineteen point agenda. I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Frank. Second by Severson. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Aye. I'm assuming you were in favor, Barb? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I, I forgot to delay before I kept going. Um, <laughs> all right, item number four, approve the minutes of the May 5th, 2023 public safety meeting. All right, motion by Frank, second by McKee. Any discussion on those minutes? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Item number five, coroner updates. Do we have coroner updates this month? No? No, I do not. Okay. All right, so that brings us to, oops. Item number six, circuit court judge updates and comments. There's a little gray button on the bottom or a button on the top, one of the two. On the bottom over here. Good morning. I don't have a ton to say, just to continue to give a good report that we're continuing to catch up with the backlog. I feel like we're kind of on the cusp of probably hitting our stride at this point. Um, so that what that means is uh, we don't we don't when we schedule things we can do it in a more timely manner we don't have to set a hearing out three months um, just because we don't have time on the calendar so it's very nice to continue to look at the calendar and realize that we can find a date thirty days out we can find a date forty five days out just because we don't have this huge backlog so we're always looking for opportunities to be more efficient in that in that regard and to learn and I think we're doing that so. That's good. That feels good. And I think that's good for everybody. Um, we are addressing some of the audio issues that we've had. And so um, I'm very appreciative that MIS is um, helping us get a new um, a speaker at the bench. I've had difficulty hearing people speaking because there's no audio amplification that comes right at the bench. The speakers point actually away from the bench and toward Council table and it toward the gallery in the back, and there's never been anything that allows me to hear very well. Um, so it's it's nice to know that we're on we're very close to getting that. I think we're scheduled for early June, so mm -hmm. that's that's great. We're also looking at um, needing more microphones at council table right now. There's just one microphone at each council table in both courtrooms. Um, ideally, we need two because very often we actually usually have more than one individual sitting at each table and they basically slide the microphone back and forth. It takes time. There's a little bit of delay. It's a small amount of delay, but it's really most appropriate that we have a microphone for each individual that's sitting there. So CCAP will provide the microphones, but the county has to pay for all of the wiring, um, the wires and the wiring. So that's sort of that county state um, collaboration that that we're talking about. We're also looking now at um, some of the budget items. So that's as a new judge, that's kind of a new thing for me. Um, but that's that's good to kind of get that in the hopper and figure that out. Um, and with looking at budget items, but also with an eye toward um, court security. Some of these issues that are sorely lacking in our county that we need um, that we should be up to speed with and we are not and we look forward to doing that in collaboration. Uh, of course, with the sheriff's department and um, in the context of the. Courthouse security committee meeting uh, courthouse security committee, which meets quarterly. We've had a couple of meetings now, so I, I again, I, I keep saying this, but I'll just reiterate. I think that's a really nice forum. Um, 
for the different stakeholders to come together and make some smart decisions and um, smart recommendations in terms of what it is we really need um, in terms of small uh, improvements, but sort of larger improvements in terms of uh, dovetailing with whatever the county is going to do ultimately with this building. Uh, if we're going to stay here and uh, how long we're going to stay here, I really don't think we can spend the next 10 years having a courtroom the way we have it without the kind of security measures that need to be implemented. Um, it's a huge liability for the county and it's just, uh, it's just a work that needs to be done with regard to that. So it's nice to have that conversation started and um, have it grow and have all of the people that have the different have different um, expertise in different areas come together so we can figure it out. That is about all I have to say. So just for the rest of the committee, they have started developing a capital plan to try and incorporate some of this security measures into our capital plan and our so it'd be our borrowing that we do each year to try to tackle some of these issues. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you. All right, so that brings us to item number seven, clerk of court, which I, she said she was going to send a report, but I didn't see it in that email. Or, oh, did it just get buried in my inbox? She sent an email saying she wasn't going to be at the meeting and that she would send a report, but I never, I, yeah, so anyway. Yeah. So just a further explanation on that. So we have a jury trial going on um, yesterday and today with Judge Allen. She said next month she would catch us up. That's what she said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, she's been, the clerk of court's office has just been very busy with, understandable. The, yeah. with the jury trial. So, um, I, you know, just to continue on um, then. So that's why where Stacy is at. And also that's where uh, Jennifer Harper is at right. because they are all in the jury trial, in the jury trial today. So, so do you want to move on to your, your number eight? Probate. Sure. <laughs> so um, I don't have any financial reports either since today is June 2nd and we want, you know, I, I haven't received anything um, from the county clerk's office as far as updates on the, you know, where we're at with the budget, but we're in good shape right now for this year for 2023. But of course that always changes um, as we near the end of the year, yes. but um, there's nothing really new to update on that. We did, I'm just going to kind of continue on from what the judge said. So we have um, this last week, the three of us, uh, the judge, Stacy, and myself and our offices um, did work on the request for capital improvement projects. So um, I really, as far as the probate, I don't have um, really too much to update on the regular updates and reports. My deputy is doing well and learning. Um, so I feel like there's really not a lot to update you on that. but. Jumping down to B capital on the budget, the capital improvement project. So those were due to um, to Derek and to all everyone um, this last week. So like I was saying, the three of us went looked at things that we need, and just you know, many of you have been on this committee, but a little bit of background just as a reminder, um, you know that we have been asked for many years to have a 0% increase in our budgets. So we've been asked to cut, we've been asked to have a 0% increase. Uh, we went under a lot of stress and scrutiny when we were looking at growing to referendum. So I feel like the budget side of my job has been difficult um, to say the least. I would say, especially the last three years that it's heightened time in my job stress in my job and um, it just takes a lot. It seems like and it seems like we should not have to go through this every year, but I feel like I have to really stand my ground and fight for everything that we can keep. And so the way in talking to our interim administrator, he said, well, you know, we have been doing without for a long, long time. The only way to get what we need is to put it on the capital improvement projects. So that's what we have been proposing. Um, so, and then, and we will, when Stacy's here, we can add this. So I'm just gonna give a brief overview of what we put on our um, 
capital improvements so that you as a committee know that what's important to us and where we're going with it. And then we'll give you know more details as we work out. But I wanted you to be informed of our stance and ex again express some frustration where I feel like in other areas there seems to be lots of money and then in our area there's never enough money for what we need to do in the court side of things. So um, we kind of broke it down to categories. So as the judge mentioned on the technology side of things, we're working in the large courtroom. Um, that's pretty good. So for 2024, we're looking at, um, we really, really need Zoom in the small courtroom. So as today is a perfect example, we have a jury trial going on in the large courtroom. Judge McDougall will be in the small courtroom. No one can appear adequately by Zoom. They can appear by phone. We can do some workarounds with laptops, with our personal laptops, but it's certainly difficult. We have um, an inmate that's gonna need to be transferred for 1130 hearing. If the jury trial is going on, I talked to Quay briefly in dispatch. We're gonna have to go through second floor and up the steps or however they decide is the best. Um, but it involves court security. And it's just not ideal to not have Zoom in the small courtroom. So we really need that. I feel like that is a desperate need. I would like to see it be a priority for 2024. Just, just today is a perfect real life example. Two, the two hearings that I was scheduled to have, I'm going to be in Vernon County this afternoon, but this morning, um, the first one, which we had to move, uh, involved an expert witness who was going to appear by Zoom. But when we realized we had to use the small courtroom um, and we really needed to have this hearing, uh, uh, we were trying, you should have seen us trying to scramble and figure out how, how could we make this happen. And all of us putting our heads together almost couldn't except to maybe have this person somehow on somebody's speaker. I mean, just the most barely adequate solution to a problem that should not exist. Um, we so, could have accommodated that for you because I have another owl. So we could have put a remote session up there, but I didn't know you had a need. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't know that. And mm -hmm. I guess that's the first time I've heard that. So that's good. So again, this is great when we talk about things, we can find solutions together. So that's really good to know. Thank you. Um, uh, and then as Jenny said, it might not seem like a big deal about bringing an inmate up to the second courtroom, but first of all, you don't wanna take him through a jury trial. It's extremely disruptive to have a man that's handcuffed and shackled, um, you know, coming through in orange right in the middle of a jury trial. It's just as inappropriate as it can be. So what that means is that if he is going to come up, he's got to come down up through the second hallway, and then he has to be unshackled. I mean, you can't ask him to walk up the steps with his ankles handcuffed together, basically. And so it creates certain security risks. I mean, um, you know, of course, security officers shouldn't have to deal with that either. To have Zoom installed in that second courtroom is just the most common sense thing that there could be, and it it would be utilized on a regular basis. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jenny. Just a quick question, Barb. How much does an owl cost? Like if we, well, we could, would an owl work in that room? Yes and no. The problem that we're gonna have, and, and one of their suggestions is for a wireless system. You can't do a wireless system completely. You can do it with Zoom only, but you can't do it otherwise because we don't capture, Zoom will capture the audio and send it to the DAR, but if you're doing oh, well, what we have to get the sound we can't do a remote one because we can't get the sound to the dar um so there's that um and we have an extra owl so we can certainly set that up for them that to get them through temporarily but it's not a permanent, it's not a permanent solution. solution okay jennifer can i ask did you put the update to that in your cip because i put it in my cip so i'm concerned that it got on and i thought that that I was supposed to put it in mine. Did it go into both? Um, I didn't put it under registered probate. Okay. So 
and there seemed to be some questions on that. Um, so it, I, it was definitely not put under the register and probate um, clerk of court, but we wanted to make it known. So there has been lots of yeah, conversation. Yeah, we had that. And Derek and I had agreed it was on mine, but then I was like, oh, is she saying she put it in hers? And it was doubled. Yeah, no, and I guess it was because we feel like, so it's under your budget, Yeah, but our need. Mm -hmm. And that's the way <laughs> the entire county is. Right. IT yeah. stuff for Clay's department and Darren's department, they all, it's their need, but we, our budget. So I guess as this committee, I wanted to explain that, I guess, as our need, but it is under Barb's budget, we will still be strongly advocating for this project. Okay. But it's going to be under the MIS. Okay. As long as you guys all know what's going on. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So that got that on the record. Yeah. That's where the money is. <laughs> right. so like, it. where's the money coming yeah. from? Right. <laughs> Whose budget is the money coming Who's from? Coming, yeah. Budget is the money coming from. So um, that is pretty much what I wanted to say on the technology side of things. Um, then also just wanted to briefly touch base, which we already have on um, court security. So same thing, we are working in co collaboration with the sheriff's department. So some of <laughs> our requests may actually run through the sheriff's budget possibly as a solution because it's under court security. So again, um, I just want this committee to be aware of that. You know, it's kind of the court needs, but um, after discussion, some of that will be there. So if you're wondering why his budget's increasing, is right coming from some of the court requests too. This is the capital budgets for each department that we're talking about, correct? The capital improvement project. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then um, down the road, this is like for 2025, 26, just going to briefly mention it. Um, Stacy probably talked about this another time and maybe I'll just let her, but um, there's supposed to be per statute, I believe, a restroom for juries separate where they would not have interaction with the public and with potential um, and we don't have that. I'm just bringing that to your attention for future years. Um, and then um, maintenance that needs to be done um, that we're also we're looking at. There's the hole in the law library ceiling still needs to be repaired. Um, there's water damage there by the steps, um, carpet in the jury room. There's just a lot of maintenance that has been put off for a long, long time. That's never been addressed because we didn't have money. And so we've included some of that mm -hmm. on capital improvement projects. If you want more details, I'd be glad to go over that. But there's a lot of little maintenance in the courtroom that's just here in the courthouse um, that has not been dealt with in, in many years. And um, I assume now that the roof's been fixed, that has there's no new leaks and damage like that's all good. So now it makes sense to repair right the ceilings that were damaged by yeah. previous water leaks. Yeah. So we're still kind of working on. I mean, our budgets aren't due. I just wanted you know you to be aware that some of these things that have been put off are now looking at under um, capital improvement projects. Okay. Anyone have any questions? All right. Thank you very much. That brings us to district attorney updates. I do not see her online. I'm assuming she's in a trial, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. That brings us to emergency management. Just keep it short and sweet. Um, we got the results back from our integrated well, Southwest Wisconsin preparedness planning survey that we sent out. Uh, we work with uh, Iowa County, Lafayette, Green, Crawford, Burn, and Grant. Ourselves. It was about 500 people that responded or just under. 61 from Richland County. So we're kind of sifting through that that uh, information. Um, the last year during the budget time, there was a resolution that was passed that the ambulance service had to come up with a, a, a business plan. So the business plan is complete. Um, I was hoping to get it in front of you folks for today, but what I realized that I, when the agenda and everything was due, I didn't get it on there. So I'll put it That's up the next in time. July. Okay. But it is going to finance, I believe at the next finance meeting. Um, Chairman 
Uh, Brewer mentioned, though, that it would be tabled and not to have action taken until July because of other more pressing items on finances agenda. Um, and then I guess just as we're going into the budget season, um, kind of echoing some of Jenny's thoughts, um, and maybe this is something that department heads can work out with, you know, the new county administrator. But I think it might be better if we review how a budget's presented. Um, we can look at ways where department heads don't feel like they're coming and validating what they do for the public and more just here's the budget, what's your question type of, of scenario. Has we'll he given you instructions about what he's looking for? Like, has he given you don't? You know, say the same cut. Has there been any instruction coming through? What we got from John uh, last this last time was just to get the capital improvement project okay. um, plan in, and so uh, uh, department heads, you know, and all of us were scrambling on that. We were able to on the emergency management side, we were able to pull like seventy thousand dollars out uh, because of agreements that we have between highway and the sheriff's department on vehicles, so we don't have to buy an emergency management response truck. We'll just take superintendent or highway commissioner's truck and just extend the life of it. So um, that collaboration that working together, communicating together has been really good. So there's, you know, that needs not there, but um, I think it goes beyond just the capital improvement planning and just, you know, different ways to handle different situations. So have you heard on the grant yet? The one for the, equipment? For the FEMA grant? No, we probably won't hear anything on that at the earliest will be July. Okay. And and then just going into item number eleven, if I can, the PSAP GIS grant. Yeah. Um, no update. It's the quarter report was in. Um, I did get information from Lieutenant Says on training, and Barb sent something on a GIS um, licensure. Um, so that's really just an update on that. So. Okay. All right. Any questions? Yeah. So I did um, have a uh, meet with Cheryl uh, at the administrator's office. She had some questions. There was some, I think there's just some confusion as to um, what the labeling of the grant was and how they were separating it, what the PSAP grant and the PSAP GIS and equipment. So uh, we sat down and kind of went through what that, what the differences are. Um, so I think that's probably sorted out at this point, what the responsibilities are. I guess I, in just, uh, uh, reiterating that it is kind of a joint effort to make sure we get the mapping piece that uh, Land Records is doing along with the piece of equipment. So is so Mike Vindel listed as the primary contact for the yes. GIS portion? Yeah. Yes. Wasn't he at the meetings where we talked, where that grant was? Yes, and he, he's included in all the correspondence, any correspondence that okay. I have. I, I received a message from Cheryl saying that he didn't have any idea what it was. and that he had nothing to do with it was essentially, wasn't that the message she sent to us? Yeah, and that was, um, <laughs> exactly, and that was the confusion. The two grants were, were worded very similar, and so he, when he looked at the one grant, it was the equipment and that thing, and he had nothing oh, to do with that part of it. Okay. But the other one said uh, PSAP GIS, and the other one said just PSAP, so there was a confusion as to which one was which, so we, we tried to clarify what the, Labels of the grant are to make sure we have that definition. I, I think we've got that resolved. I'll be checking with. So he Cheryl. understands his role. That's my understanding, and I'll be going back and confirming that with Cheryl. Okay. Anything else on that? All right. That moves us to the sheriff's department. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Talking to your mic. Sorry. One last thing on the PSAP grant, uh, Aaron included the training numbers that we submitted to Darren uh, in the folder. So we have so used they'll, they'll be in there. Yeah, we have the used. grant to pay for some training. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so far, one thousand eight hundred and seventy-six dollars and thirty-eight cents. So awesome. Um, Sheriff's Department report. Do you want to do the? I think it's monthly invoices. Do you want to do that first, or do you want to sure. do your report first? We can do the monthly invoices. Okay. Any questions? I didn't on those. see anything that raised any flags for me. Anyone have any questions on the on the bells? No. Well, then I would entertain a motion to motion by McKee, second by Frank. Any discussion? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Bills are paid. All right. And I guess as you see from the monthly bills, our vouchers are down for the month of May. Um, bookings are holding steady at 61. Um, average number of inmates housed is 40, 40.76. Uh, That's the biggest number I think I've ever seen, even with the minus nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's well, and then if you look at our monthly complaints, uh, monthly complaints are going up. So that probably plays into the book, bookings. Right. For the well, average uh, number. The, in housed. Yeah. Uh, citations are steady at 77. Process papers served 27. That's a lot, too. Yeah. Uh, transports for the month, eight. And <coughs> run electronic monitoring is nine. Um, dispatch, 555, 550 calls for service, 96 calls for EMS, and 112 for the police department. So um, just brief update on capital improvement. Um, I did some changing around. There were some things that I didn't remember that should be there that were on listed for me for 2024, like a UTV. Um, I removed the UTV from the capital improvement. I, it's, a, it's a want more than a need. Um, I did carve out some money from that savings. Uh, our patrol rifles are, uh, I think they're over 20 years old now, uh, replace replace those um and then i left the, some of the things that were in there initially that we had talked about last year so um also when i got all that back i got the five-year plan document back um, i did make some edits to that which are probably going to be not super popular um in part of that was our revenue um i had i had accounted for sixty thousand dollars of revenue for the shit sanctions um we based it on six months of data and doubled it uh well that's we're not tracking to hit sixty thousand this year so i'm i put the projections in that back to thirty thousand uh, i also added in the jail administrator position again again i know that hasn't, it'll, it'll be hasn't discussed been, yeah. hasn't been feasible uh <laughs> but the need hasn't gone away as well as the uh, patrol position that we haven't filled. I added that back in because the need hasn't gone away for it. So, I mean, you might as well, so we can talk yeah. about it. And, and that's just, if you it. don't put I, it in there, then we won't talk about it. it. It's not in yeah. there. So right. I threw that stuff back in there. And, um, I'm sure we'll see that come back up. It will. Budget time. No question. <laughs> it will. Yeah. I have a question. Mr. Ruth, go ahead. So we're down another patrolman. No, we, this is, sorry, this is the position that we've had open since 2010. We've chosen not to fill it. Yeah, yeah. We haven't budgeted, so it's not been budgeted. It's, so it, we're allowed to fill it we by ordinance. Two new, well, we budgeted for it once, and then we were told not to fill it. Right. So, so will you be looking to fill that position? Yes. Yep. And, and I guess you're next. Well, if it like, gets approved in his budget, I would like to. I would it. like to fill it in twenty four if I'm approved. So with that, um, we started the loan rock contract. Um, that covers slightly more than half the wages and benefits of a full time patrol deputy. Um, so with that, so that would cover half the cost. Um, potential, if we were to be selected for the cops grant, that would pick up the remainder. So temporarily, temporarily for three years, yeah. Is there any update on Casanova? Um, I have not spoke to Casanova since the last election. So I, I mentioned it to the village president just in passing, uh, but I haven't sat down with the board yet to discuss. Is it a different board or is it the same board um, after the election? I think a lot of the same, but yeah. new president. Oh, new, okay. Yep. Currently, can we handle Casanova? Um, well, right now, I would say we're still working on Lone Rock because we're due to being short staff and training new people. We, our schedule has been a little light. So are we fully staffed or are we, we still are, trying to hire? In, in the sense of all the positions are filled, but we have, we're training. Tra I was going to say they're still in yeah. training. Okay. What? 
the staffing level memo. Um, so that kind of explains right. what we're talking about as well. Aaron, Aaron threw that in for us. Oh yeah, overtime and overtime for this month is going to be high. Well, for last month and this month, but yeah, with how we ended last month and. So we'll get monthly report next month for. When they get it, yeah, yeah, I, I assume so. Yeah, that's the only problem with having it the first week. Um, okay. Any questions? And then, all right. So, was there any other reports you wanted to go through before we move on to the security bid? All right, so that's the SGTS folder, correct? Um, yes. There's uh, a couple of folders. SGTS is one of the bids. They had a full folder of documents. The other one um, is in there also, and they that's the second bid. So we had two bids. Oh, the higher power bid package, yep. right? Yeah. Yep, we had two bids that came in um, from the vendors who looked at the security project. Um, luckily, they both came in at or below our projected budget for that piece of the project. So that was reassuring. I'm trying to pull up the two bids, right? So there's that, yeah, if everyone wants to open up Excel. I'm going to share the, the security bid tab. Yeah, because that essentially breaks down yes. the dollar parts. Yeah. Yes. Have we worked with either of these companies before? Um, Sargent's actually does the locks in the jail now. Is that SGTS? Yes, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, and Piper is a very reputable company. They do jails all over um, the nation, but they do several in Wisconsin as well. So they're both very qualified candidates, um, and we were lucky to get the bids from there. We did have a third company that looked at the project but did not bid. Um, sorry, one second here. And what was, what, what did we budget? And can you remind me what the amount was we budgeted? Was it 350? 350, yep. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to share this. And, but that 350 does not include two cameras that we think we should potentially put outside. Corporate. It does include all of the cameras. Oh, in the courthouse though? Okay, let me let me rephrase that. There are two cameras that are in this bid that we do not have to put across the street on that building to face back at this building. Oh, so we have two so cameras we have, we can put somewhere else, assuming yeah. we can get wiring there. Right. And Mike, if you want to pitch in on this, I'm totally cool with that too. Here we go. Now coming up is the bid documents. So the denims, all of the qualifications were met by both companies. Um, the total bid amount, sergeants came in uh, quite a bit lower. They came in at 316, 215.82. Uh, System Technologies, which is your Piper, came in at 353, 840.84. So my recommendation uh, to the committee is to go with sergeant. We already have them established in our jail, and I feel that they can make the project work well, um, and they were significantly lower. Right. And the alternate deduct, is there any reason we we should look at deducting? I wouldn't. Not if you want your other two cameras. Right, yeah, and I'm, I'm, they came in significantly less than budgeted amount, so my my reaction would be to leave it all. And that was it. mine as well when I talked to Mike. Um, I said, if, get if we're that exactly far below, let's do cutting, it all. Instead of cutting it and then two years from now looking to spend money to fix whatever we didn't do now. Right. And that's certainly. Unless someone has a different thought on that. Talk into the mic. So either Barb or Clay, whoever can answer this the best. Um, so does this include any camera, additional cameras on this bid? So mm -hmm. we were. 
So what Barb was saying is when we originally drew up the plans, they were lacking cameras in that, that lobby area between the two courtrooms. Mm -hmm. And so I had asked, I had asked since we were under budget that we add those cameras in. What Barb is suggesting is that they're already covered. We're just going to move them from a different location. So we had, they had put cameras on HHS pointing at the courthouse so we could catch traffic around the courthouse. We could just move those into the courthouse. So that that's what the cameras were that we were we would like to get the cameras in that lobby, that waiting area. So so it'd be outside the judges' chambers and looking at the the law library and small courtroom. Mm -hmm. There's not one budgeted for inside the small courtroom. I'd have to go back and look at the questions. I don't remember. Mike, do you remember if there's one inside the court, small courtroom offhand? I don't. I, yeah, I don't remember offhand. I know we did. I, I believe that there are the replacement of cameras that exist in those courtrooms today. So I'm not sure if there's one in the small courtroom today. But the other the other point I would want to make, too, and um, you know, this is not like a, a closed system you're buying. You're not uh, you're not uh, going to get the cameras that you're you're deciding on today, whether you uh, remove some of those exceptions or not. But uh, it's really a system once it's in place. Um, if you want to, these are networked cameras, so it's, they really run on your network. So um, it's just a matter of uh, you know buying a camera, buying a, an additional license, and and the system has capacity to. You know, add them uh, pretty efficiently by probably your IT group. So just keep that in mind as well. Supervisor Frank. Thank you. So, um, in looking at the proposal that was out, I'm seeing an alternate for two cameras in the small courtroom. Uh, those are listed as alternate one. Actually, there's four that are listed as alternates for small courtroom. Um, this is the sergeant's bid. This well, this is in the quote oh. that was originally put out. So I'm kind of curious what the alternates are or aren't. And if we're doing something in the small courtroom with cameras, why aren't we doing something with Zoom at the same time? Is there a, a, the ability to put a project together so we're not duplicating efforts and connections? These aren't the cameras that we use with Zoom. These are security cameras that won't be in that project because the ones with Zoom have to be wired through the DAI. I understand they're not the same cameras for Zoom, but if we're doing wiring and networking and anything, is there anything that can be jointly worked together in that project to serve? Are these Wi-Fi cameras? They would connect yeah. to the network yeah. by Wi-Fi or by ether? By network. By network. Yep. Well, and the DAR, so you're saying that the, so the DAR is the state data or whatever recording digital recording there you go that thing so that's the that's the tricky part with zoom correct i believe our job mm -hmm. right we couldn't put them on our network though because no, of the because way they're on the other network, network. um i just requested it from mike day and he sent it to me i can put it out this it's is the, all in the, the quote you're not on our network. This isn't the quote. Um, this is the the RFP that went out to to for the bidders to bid on, um, and that's what I requested. I certainly could. Going with what the judge had said earlier as far as where our future is going I would can this system be readily picked up and moved if we move to a different facility built something new I'm, I'm looking down the road can most of this be reused nope sorry I'm gonna be honest with you it's wired to the locks and the doors in the jail so but, but parts of it could be the cameras and stuff could be the hardware, the hardware I can understand, but the, maybe the cameras could be reused. I was going to yeah. say everything outdates. Yeah. And the cameras are only a few hundred dollars a camera. That's not the main cost. The cost is the wiring and the system setup. Probably the software and the licensing. Yeah. And that would, though. Mm -hmm. 
And how many cameras are we talking at this point? Um, I will pull up the bed. You've got the bed right there. I do. I'm not finding it in the sergeant's piece of it. Okay. So I'm just a minute. Let me get back to the beds. Sorry, I, it's off the top of my head. I don't want to give you a number. I think no, that's I, fine. I'm just trying to know we were more than doubling, but they were looking at ways they could cover two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing the contact list. I'm seeing their info. I'm not finding their bid price, in my, which. Oh, there it is. Okay. The placement of 20 plus cameras. So I'm working on how many. So once we enter into this contract, if we decide we wanted more cameras, we can just do a change order, correct? If that's what we as a committee decided we want, once we know exactly how many cameras we have and where and where we might need more. Okay. Yes. Do we have to take this to finance? Uh, the What was said by Mr. Wendell, and you can certainly take it to finance, I'm okay with that was it wouldn't be necessary and go straight from our committee to correct full county board mm -hmm. because they have already approved the full overall project but if you want to do the step of finance that's okay too i, I, I don't i mean we i don't think we've done the other ones to, through finance no so we can go straight to board i was just curious so uh, what what was the zoom cost to add zoom in for the court the we don't have those bids back we yet. don't have a price even if we have a rough idea 30 to fifty thousand. Okay. <laughs> so this not only is cameras, this is also door controls and intercom. Yes. Yes. The intercoms then are part of the requirement for the jail jail We've been uh, inspector. inspector. We've been yeah. through yep. that. And so this is part of that piece of that. What doors do these do the intercoms cover? Is it just the jail doors or is it going to be out into the other so rest of the building. The existing. Yeah. yeah, I figured that's what they were, uh -huh. but I didn't know they had it. I didn't know they had numbers, but yeah. the lobby as well, the sheriff's office lobby. Does that include the elevator also, or is that just audio on like it has been? I don't think there's a call button in there. No, that's on its own camera that comes in separate. And separate audio at, at the one point. Mm -hmm. right. So what doors will this open then? Again, just the jail doors, or will this? Sally Port's garage doors, the new garage doors, the new ambulance side is going to cover all those doors for opening and closing. The old system did. That's why I was right. I'm pretty sure probably it, the Sally Port's on there, but I can double check. Mike, do you know off top of your head? The doors then. Yeah. Be five more. I think it covers the entrance doors down there, and and the uh, I see all that on the diagram, and then the the uh, any of the I think the doors in the in the jail area that uh, some of them are card readers, but other ones just you know, uh, would open locks from the, the control system itself. Well, we're talking about the doors for the garages, the bay doors. The big overhead, yeah, big bay doors. Yeah, yeah, those are those are on there. All five 
There's five right now, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then I guess I forgot the the, the dispatch dispatch door, and then the corridor okay. gate. Sliding door in the gate. Yeah, in the corridor gate. Okay. So. So it seems like we really covered what we need for the. I mean, like, other than at the courthouse. But and then the, I guess the other thing too that I, uh, the key key strikes, the fob strikes. Mm -hmm. Um. We're adding some fob strikes. Uh, Door access system to the entire building for all employees. Yeah, so it'll be. And so that's in this bid already? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it won't just serve the sheriff's office. It'll be hard access for the other offices as well. Okay, so this is an entire security for the building, mm -hmm. yeah. even though it's listed here in the in the agenda as jail. It's it's the entire building, so it's going to be key fobs, courthouse, yes, more court courthouse security. For the building. Because the That's dispatch center opens up those doors now, so it's going to lessen the load on the dispatch center to give employees the ability to come in and out. They won't have to buzz them. So how many fobs, how many doors are going to be fobbed then? Just those two, just 13 no, and 14? There's several. Several. So the, so the two main doors. Um, we have the door into the garage, this where we have the lockers. Right. That has been fobbed. Um, we're going to do the door down to the employee only area um, where the break room is, where the kitchen is. That'll be fobbed. Um, oh, the silent part. What was that? The, the door. That yes, that'll be fobbed. Yeah. So for for the courts for the 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 courts then in this case. They will have a fob, and they'll, they'll have to come through those doors. Will the, the main front door or the side door over here be fobbed, or will they just these, these over here? Correct. Those that, are exit only. Court outside? Correct. No, those are those are going to be left alone. Okay. They're exit only, so right. Yeah. Let's so just no, it's exit only. In group. We use it. It like Aaron and I use it. Not, nobody really uses it. Essentially, the front door and it goes out the. Yeah. The old east pile, I assume it was the old front entrance. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So then who's going to monitor all the cameras? What is there any, um, as, 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 as we've talked, I have my concerns. Uh, the telecommunicators are extremely busy. And now we have 40, how many cameras roughly? 20 odd to new cameras yeah. going yeah. on. Who's responsible for that? They're, they're the same ones they've always been monitoring. Well, I'm seeing new ones in the court in the Plus. small courtroom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'm I'm seeing some new and different ones because there's not that many there right now as there are listed here. So there's a lot more going on, and how does that affect courthouse security? What's going to be the process for that? I'm concerned that. So I, I I mean my easy answer to that is is that with this system we'll have a way where. We can gain easy, easier access to these cameras, so it wouldn't be out of question that the court security deputy could monitor cameras in the courthouse side from the courtroom okay. itself. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, you know, I, I, I get where you're coming from because even just watching the jail cameras alone is 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 a lot. Um, but I think we're going to have the jail is going to focus on the jail cameras if we know. That there's a case that's going on in one of the courtrooms that is drawing a little more attention or has us a little uh, more in a heightened sense of security. We'll probably have people monitoring like Aaron or I could monitor from our office as well. So it's going to be uh, I wish I had an easy concrete answer sure. that we're going to have a dedicated person to monitoring cameras. Yeah. It, it'll be situational dependent. Do we know if this system will handle a mobile app um, for the court security? Great, thank you. And these record, correct? Yep. Which record. our current ones do not, right? Which is the big yeah. problem for us. And one, just to jump in, one thing that we've discussed and that exists in neighboring counties um, inside the courtrooms, these uh, say in Vernon County and in Iowa County, this currently exists. There's sort of a station, a kiosk. Where the court security officer can actually sit in their monitors in front of him or her, and they can see exactly what's happening outside each courtroom and in the hallways. And um, so, hopefully, that's in sort of not well, we, the immediate plan. I just don't know where you'd put them. 
Oh, I'll I'll find a place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, if not a problem to do that, I just, you know. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's enough of a priority that I think we can mm -hmm. figure it out. It doesn't have to be a big, big station. It could be, as, you know, it could be. A you little... could do it on an iPad form, though, and then it wouldn't take your space. Yeah, we could. It might be helpful, too. I mean, maybe we can get some pictures of what it looks like. It's really not that obtrusive in these other courtrooms, mm -hmm. um, but just, you know, just a little stand with something right in front of them. I, I mean, the idea of sort of a, a mobile tablet works, but that may not be big enough to see everything that you need mm -hmm. to see at one time, which I think is the current problem in that there's so much to look at if you've got more eyes, but then you've got to be able to see, you know, these different views, you've got hallways, you've got different courtrooms, you've got all of this that, that needs to be viewed. All right, so are we satisfied that we would like to accept one of these bids? I would entertain a motion to accept one of them. Which would you like? I'm assuming you're motioning for Sergeant. Yes. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I would, I think we should go for the one that's 316,000 versus the one that's 353, personally. Yeah. I, I would, if that's a motion, I would second that, but I would like to do some follow up discussion on it. All right. So I have a motion by a key second by Frank. Discussion. Go ahead, Supervisor Frank. Thank you. So if we're looking at, uh, we were originally quoted at 350,000 is what was put away for this. We're looking at 316. Um, the difference there alone covers a good chunk of the Zoom costs for the small courtroom right there. Um, I think along with the possibility of a, of a second monitor, a second location uh, for the security people to look at, uh, I will say that initially when I, I saw the wording on this doc, on this quote that it said jail security at 300 and some odd thousand, I was absolutely opposed to it because if it was just that area, that's a lot of money that could be done in other ways. Now knowing that this is an entire courthouse security package with fobs, and I think that, I think that needs to be promoted out better. I did not realize that. Um, so. Uh, based on that, I would I would encourage that the difference, if we can anyway make that Zoom possible in the courtroom with that balanced difference. Um, the sergeant I, sergeant wouldn't be in. We wouldn't contract with sergeant to do a Zoom. No, it would have to be separate. But I'm gonna I'm gonna step in if I may. If 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 it's not too premature. Mike and I had a discussion about our budget project where this 8.1 is sitting. We need that money to stay in this project because we're going to be real tight to hit the 8.1. So uh, setting that aside, e every penny that we can set aside, we have to build another tower. I, I, I would strongly urge you to reconsider that. When I would guess if we're that tight on the budget, then why are we doing this project at all? Why are we not just going then with the um, the relay system that's currently on the council that will handle the doors. Because we and, have to upgrade the camera system. Right, they, but that will handle the doors and the uh, intercom separately, and then you do just a bid for just the cameras. Okay. And, and I, I know I'm getting off topic completely, but if we're not going to look at investing this, I'm curious how we're going. I do have a question. So we originally had $50,000 from a previous borrowing set aside for cameras, did we not? Oh. What happened to... What happened to that? I have no idea. I would have to. I mean, I assume it's so still sitting in a. Maybe, place. maybe that. Did we use it to hit a mile or pay a, pay a bill for uh, Mike Day? For, yeah, we may have utilized that money for the contract for Mike for a phase three. Right, but then wouldn't that have been reimbursed? Mm -mm. The phase four is all that was in the 8.4. Um, okay, uh, anyone else on the committee have comments as far as how you want to handle? Mr. McKee, go ahead. Yeah, um, we're talking about um, WebEx in a small courtroom. That's entirely off topic. We can't really act on that. You know what I'm saying? It's something that may be able to be discussed down the road if it's on the agenda. Right now, all we have is the bids. True, true. And uh, so I think 
we can decide later what to do with that excess borrowed money. I guess then I would suggest we take this to personnel and finance. Uh, we could put that topic on the agenda and see if there is some type of source funding we can do for that. So we would be approving this bid, but wanting it to go through finance? Yes. For further discussion. And Sheriff? Can I just, I mean, because I get where Bob's coming from on the Zoom for the courtroom and like, in my mind, I'm envisioning, well, if we're pulling wire for a camera system, why don't we pull wire for the Zoom system at the same time? That's the way I'm looking at it. I don't see really how the two projects mesh, um, but it would make sense to me that if we're already in there pulling wire, why don't we pull some extra because we know we needed to put a Zoom system in there. Right. If there's any collaboration that can yeah. be done, now's the time to do it. And I guess my concern is with tabling the tabling the project further is that we're already operating on a system that's been giving us troubles yeah. right now. That's what our, that's what our, our control system now is the system we replaced for, for dispatch. So we're still using it. Now we're just relying on it to run doors because if it dies, we can always manually run doors as inconvenient as that is. And, but our, you know, the other side of that is, is that again, continually getting dinged by the jail inspector because we don't have a recording camera system. Yeah, that's a we don't have point. cameras in critical places. Um, you know, I, I don't want to keep kicking the can down the road when we know we, we're, when we know we have, we're trying to address problem areas. Mm -hmm. and, and I would agree with you. I don't want to kick the can down the road. And I think holding it to get to personnel and finance before it hits county board delays us. Personal and finance it just delay us at all because finance meets next Wednesday. Oh, next Wednesday. Okay, I thought the right. assuming so, it gets on the agenda. Correct. Yeah, yeah we we'll get to that point. Yeah. So, um, I guess we're going to do a project. We'd like to see it all done. I agree, but I also don't want to derail the the cameras. I think the cameras are a, a priority for everyone in this room. Um, so I I do agree. I wish we could make sure we were doing things. Efficiently, um, and, and it, it's frustrating how often it does not work out. But if we can in the next week figure it out, then fine. But um, I'm a little, I mean, we can't, well, we do have a radio tower project update for item number 16, so I am going to jump to 16 for just a second here. Okay. Um, before we vote on this, no, I'm not, we have to vote. Sorry, I, for procedurally speaking, let's vote. So anyway, so, so just oh. um, if I could make one more comment, which is a little bit is tied to this, I just want to bring it to um, everyone's attention that's working on this project too. In the court security meeting, um, there was one recommendation on the exit doors to put a some type of buzzer so they could not be propped open. So when we're looking at doors and fobs and things right now, a lot, there's at least two off the top of my head where people can exit and just go out, but they also can can be propped open and unknowingly, um, which is a and so that was brought up at the security meeting. Just wanted to quickly mention that to keep in mind something on that when we're looking at all of this. But adding that to this project would add significant cost because there's no wiring going to those doors and those doors are hard to wire. Just so maybe we need to put that on the on the capital. That would become part of the capital improvements that we make. Okay, so I guess I'm going to call the question here. So all those in favor of accepting the bid from sergeants for three hundred sixteen thousand two hundred fifteen dollars and eighty two cents, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye, because I'd like to have this move to finance first. We didn't discuss whether do we need a motion for that. I don't. I mean, I'm comfortable sending it to finance. Then I would be. Is anyone opposed to sending it to finance? No, I think that's a proper way to handle it. We we voted on the motion that was presented to this body, but that doesn't stop Mr. Frank from going to finance and saying, "Look, we've got the contract in door. Let me get an a, an add on to this contract of pulling some extra wire, okay, or whatever." So then I would say aye. Okay. All right. Thanks. So I will ask again, the motion is, so uh, let's do it again. All those in favor of the sergeant's bid and we will send it to finance. 
signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we officially will send this to finance. So thank who you. will make sure that gets on the finance? I'm emailing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that brings us to um, follow up on the dog ordinance. So I rewatched last night to remember where we left it. <laughs> Could not remember. Um, but it sounded like you were going to follow up with um, determining it by state law, like what, or am I supposed to call, talk to court counsel? I couldn't tell because you weren't talking into the mic. <laughs> so I couldn't hear most of what you said until Aaron said, hey, Clay, we can't hear you. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll, that probably will just, I'll figure it out. We'll figure, I'll talk to you and we'll figure out who's going to follow up. I mean, essentially the question was, is it a township problem or is it a county problem? And I think we didn't know for sure who to ask. talking about the license fees so who like yeah the rabies like if if a dog if we're you know we require them to get a license and proof proof of rabies who enforces if they don't do that is the question All right. i went on a couple other county websites to see what they do for as far as the like the sheriff's department and it looks like to me that the townships are the ones that are responsible for collecting and enforcing if they're not actually paying those fees I didn't see anything in there as far as a fine okay. if there was if it wasn't being followed on um, Saw, Vernon. I think I looked at these I were grant, looked at their websites. I didn't see anything. And it there. was the so the county website or it was township websites? The sheriff's department website. Had like a dog. They have an idea of an ordinance in there. Yep. Say anything about them enforcing um, if, so the whole thing is silly because no one can, does a township, how does a township enforce anything? They have to hire a lawyer, right? I mean, how can they afford to, one, how could they possibly afford to? They get assessed on their taxes and like your fence lines, if they're not being followed for fence lines. You they do hire someone to do it and then charge you on your taxes. Okay, so can we just, so you know for sure or do I, I mean, I think, I guess, we, I just want to be able to tell the township Richwood Township, that it's their problem, not ours, and this is why. They're not, not going to like that answer. But. Yes, my understanding was where it always became our problem, or the, not our county's problem, is when somebody wanted to receive a, I don't know if you call it a payment or whatever, from the license fee from the fund. Then it comes to the county, because that just happened last year with yeah. Sedlax. Yeah. Yeah. Which and they got nowhere because we because there wasn't any money in the and they were I think all the were all the dog incidences in Richwood Township this year. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> What's going on with dogs? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure that's why they brought it to my attention because there was three of them in a row where two of them didn't have rabies vaccines or proof of rabies vaccines, and one was a bite injury to a human. So that's concerning, right? Yeah. If there's a potential county liability, Corp Council should probably get involved in this conversation then a little bit. Well, he he may know what our like, whether we're responsible at all. I, I don't really know. I mean, I, I could why is so if the if the people come to us to get paid out for a dog injury, doesn't that imply that we're responsible? So I think Corp Council is definitely. Yeah. All right. So we'll talk about it next time. Okay, so that brings us, well, let's t skip to 16, radio tower project updates, and then we'll come back to 15. Is there an update that I'm assuming by your letting us know that there's another tower? Is this, well, how many? Mike, you wanna. How, how many towers are we building? Okay, no. is it five? Are we building five? No. Um. Are you talking, Mike? Because we can't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, we currently have five. Now, no, no change, I guess, from the last, um, the last uh, update. Other than to say we're we're still, um, we're still working with the folks from U.S. Cellular. But yeah, we are anticipating that uh, you know there's a, an additional tower there if uh, if the U.S. Cellular. Um, thing doesn't change and and we we do like that site um what we call the boaz site over there 
Um, so, uh, you know, the, the towers themselves, I guess the good news is, is we really haven't had any big um, adjustments to our design since the last update we provided to you. Um, you know, the, 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 the locations are, are staying in place. We've got, uh, um, as far as uh, uh, land, kind of landowner agreements, we've got one I think um, the sheriff's still negotiating with, but uh, um, again, no, nothing has really uh, changed on our end. We're not making any um, deep considerations of another location, and, and, but we do have the uh, U.S. cellular concern um, still not under control. We've We've kind of moved that along to um, we we were able to get a um, a copy of the uh, new agreement that the uh, U.S. Cellular was trying to have uh, the city sign, and and kind of which kind of left us uh, or left the county out of um, the previous agreement. So we've made some modifications to that document, and it's being sent back uh, to the city, which then hopefully back to U.S. Cellular to to kind of get them um, to the bargaining table. And so um, that's just happened this week, um, but we're with the uh, with the design or with the sites. We're, we're and we're kind of moving ahead um, with a couple of areas. The, the with the radio system itself, we're we're really kind of vetting out all the the details of of the um, design and and how the the coverage looks and 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 focusing on uh, not only the radio coverage but but the paging coverage to. Just to make sure we understand um, how this design is going to play, and and that it uh, meets all the the needs and and makes the improvements that uh, the county wants to see. Um, so that's a big piece of of what we're looking at right now. Um, we're also, um, of course, a lot a lot with that is is FCC licensing. You know, we're trying to license two new uh, channels on this system. And so um, we need to we need to um, work through that process, and GenCom's um, got it underway to try and identify frequencies that we can use, and then uh, we have to apply that to the the design and make sure we understand again how it uh, it broadcasts and and it does it match up to our coverage predictions. So that's underway, and then um, as well we're uh, um, hoping to see some of the the microwave connectivity um changes um that vendor is uh looking over those details right now so um we 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 really like the uh, the microwave design but we're not exactly sure that it, you know all the the uh um dish sizes and everything will will meet uh um power loading um studies that we'll have to do so we are we did reach out um this week as well and and, and had a good discussion with folks from um, Richland Grant uh, telephone um, to understand their their fiber capabilities and and so we'll we'll be kind of vetting that as well as we as we look through our microwave connectivity. Um, but other than that, the uh, with the radio side of things, uh, with GenCom's uh, side of things, we're, we're um, taking a little closer look at, as well of uh, mutual aid and and any improvements we can make there. Um, and working all that towards kind of our, our DDR process, our detailed design review process, which uh, again, we, we hope to have in this month, but we're, we're being cautious with that. We wanna make sure we feel that we, we you know, when, once we do that review, cause that's kind of the authorization for, for GenCom to order equipment, you know, that we, we don't have a lot of, uh, of things in flux still. So um, that's a balancing act because we, we certainly want to get them to order equipment and and feel like uh, we understand delivery timeframes and you know um, implementation processes. So, but uh, certainly something that we 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 think can happen hope this month and and so um, we've got that moving forward. Um, as far as the sites themselves and maybe some civil work, uh, we did we did get out and I think I I provided last time or we were going to get out, but we did get to four of the sites. Um, we've got some preliminary drawings for three of those sites from the uh, the civil engineer. Uh, we've we've shared one of those with the landowner and, and gotten some feedback from them um, on our site down um, to the south and then uh, in in Gotham. And then uh, we've also got uh, um, 
one that we, we use for um, the folks with U.S. Cellular to kind of give them an understanding of what we're, we, we would want to do at Richland Center there. So um, those are come, become pretty helpful. And then uh, we, we have a scheduled visit for Tuesday next week to uh, visit the remaining sites and, and try and get those PR drawings started from the, the civil engineer's perspective as well. So um, hopefully all that uh, initial exploration of the, the site locations um, will be um, underway next week. And so that's kind of the, the main goal on the, on the civil side of things. So um, really, I think uh, this month we, we, we would probably be able to wrap up and, and have those initial PR drawings. And, and like I said, the, uh, the focus uh, uh, of trying to get the, the detailed design review. And I think the, the final um, piece of that or, or the uh, update there will, will really show um, a better understanding of, of the budget. Um, we're, we're looking at some options for the, um, you know, what we could use on the civil piece. We, you know, original estimation of, of towers or, and, uh, and shelters and um, the generators um, looking for options to try and, you know, limit the costs as much as possible because we, we do feel like, um, you know, we've, we've gone from our initial understanding of uh, the civil costs for the project to, to this new um, position. And, and, you know, um, I think it's important to understand that when we estimated the towers, we, we did estimate um, a lot of these civil costs, the shelters, the generators. Um, so when we talk about new sites or new greenfield sites, um, it's not like we're we're building the whole new site, but we are adding that additional cost of a of a tower, which um, you know certainly is a you know a three hundred thousand dollar or more piece. So um, yeah, it, it's a. Uh, it's a it's definitely on our radar that uh, that how that's going to impact the budget and uh, and so um, again hopefully we can we can track that and and get that a little more understood um, once we get yeah. to this DDR process. So so Mike, just to clarify, so a month ago when we said okay, are we sure that this is what how much we need to borrow? We were comfortable that 8.1 was going to be enough. What has changed? Because we knew we were going to be building towers, and I think we knew we were building, we were going to be doing four last month, and we added, so we've added one more. But I guess I would like some clarification as to why now we were wanting to make sure we save every penny of the camera project. What what has changed that all of a sudden we are? Because a month ago we were sure we didn't need more than what we asked to borrow, and now we're not sure. Well, I, I think we're we we're a little. I would say what might have what has changed is probably at least one site, but probably still the uncertainty with U.S. Cellular. Um, so I that would say those change. Are probably we knew we were uncertain things. about U.S. Cellular. That's not a change. That's that's the same. Well, I, I, again, I I just think that there's a lot of um, you know little things. I, I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I would. I would take it to the level of thirty thousand dollars, but um, yeah, I think it's in my mind, it's probably prudent to to try and rein in some of these um, understandings of costs um, before you you begin to spend potentially the what we would call the contingency funds of the, of the project. So you know, I, I don't I don't necessarily would would be concerned with with that number, but um, I, I think it's you know. I, I would I would caution you to to maybe um, get get those understandings and and hopefully even get to the bid process um, before um, you you try and uh, begin spending some of your uh, contingency funds. So it's my understanding that we had originally planned for one a little over one million in contingency, and then we also have the one point two in subscriber equipment, and now we've stated that we will also dip into our subscriber equipment as contingency. So that's what, almost 2 million in contingency or 1.75 million in contingency. So you're saying that 
not only do we need that, but we also will need any other savings we can find? No, I, I don't think I was tracking the, the subscriber money in, in my estimations. I think the subscriber money was still in the budget. As subscriber equipment? Well. I mean, that conversations that I've heard with staff, that's not what I understood. If, but. if I can just touch on that. As sure. I, I, I've not been painting a rosy rainbows and butterflies pictures to our subscribers that that money will be there in fear that it might not I, be there. I think Darren's so, the same but, thing. That's why we did the grant process. That's why we yeah. facilitated the grant process. I think, I think we're, we're just, when I have my conversations with the fire departments and stuff like that, it's, it's kind of been, I don't want you to count on that money being there. Maybe we'll try. We hope. And that's just right. It. If it's, if it's there at the end and we can buy all that radio equipment. Great. I just don't want people counting on it and I'm going to quit buying radios because I know these new radios are coming. Right. Cause I'm not even doing that. You know, I I'm still buying radios every week. Yeah. And I saw how it came out in the newspaper this week. I didn't get the newspaper this week, so I don't want to. Um, okay, so I mean, I just am curious that you know, I, I feel like a month ago we were saying we're we're confident we're borrowing the correct amount. We've added. I feel like even with Clint, that we added even more because we knew we were building more towers. You know, because originally he, I think the the first number he said to me was something less than eight million, but then he suggested adding. I thought it was eight four. It was it was eight point four originally. We went down to eight one. I know we did. Yeah, you told me. But he did. Yeah. It was it, well, yeah, it was yeah. And and we did that because we're like, well, we know we're building more towers and so so I I'm just right. frustrated, I guess is the correct term. That now we're concerned again. Because I, I think we had so many conversations about let's make sure we know and I don't before we borrow, let's make sure we have a solid number. I'm not worried that we're going to go over. I'm worried that if we start cutting money out of this project and divvying it out to other places, that it's going to become a problem. Okay. Well, Darren. Oh, go ahead. He doesn't have a mic. <laughs> I took this. Sorry. Is there a, a tracking document? We have a tracking document of what's been spent. Yep. On what? Tammy has that. I'm just wondering. And maybe we could bring that next month so we can just. There's finish. so many questions <laughs> here. Yeah. Of where we're at. Yeah. That would be a good idea. That would it would be a lot easier. But I don't know that it's going to give you a good picture because right now all that's going to show on there is like. The one payment, the payments to True North, the one payment to um, Gen Com, yeah, um, yeah. And so, like, our costs, we don't have any bills yet from our civil. Um, I had this conversation with them saying, if you want to bill us before June 1st, we need everything in. Otherwise, nothing until after June 15th. So, even if we have that tracking sheet, I think that the costs are going to start to roll in quickly. Um, once we get like civil bills yeah. and we start getting all those. With the uh, ambulance, new ambulance facility, we had a, a document that here are all of the tasks, all the subcontractors, the pieces, the labor, and you could just kind of say, okay, here comes, here comes uh, statement number six, and I could balance that on, yep, these are all the things that they had done. And then we could move on. I, you know, maybe that would help if you not had just what's been paid, but what is outstanding. And if we could shore that up. Well, you know? Mike has that Excel spreadsheet that has mm -hmm. not. It doesn't break it down into detail, but it does have. This is how much this portion is going to cost. This is how much we budgeted for this portion. Because I mean, again, I feel like an outsider looking in on this project, but it's from the last meeting. It just seems like we still. Maybe I'm wrong, and I'm not trying to stir up a hornet's nest, but it doesn't feel like we have. This is how much it's going to cost. I know. Us. I, I would agree. And this is. I know that we have a. There's, you know, there's some variables, and we've got contracts with U.S. Cellular involved there, but um, 
I, I think that it's from a taxpayer standpoint. I mean, taking taking when there, there's no, and maybe it's just because I'm not in on the loop enough, but it's it just feels like we're we're still all over the place. We don't even have a solid solid direction on on the system, and, and I could be wrong. Well, no, I think, I, am, I, think I, I don't. No, I think that Mike and the people that are dealing with this every day do have a pretty good idea. There's just there's some key things that we just have not locked down. I mean, like. Like the towers is really important. I think that once the towers, everything will fall into place once the towers have been completely decided, the contracts are signed. So I'm hoping that we are incredibly close to that point. Like by July, I, you guys will come here and tell me that we know where our towers are being built. We have contracts and everything. Do we think that's reasonable that by July we will, we're so close? I mean, we've been saying that for months now that we're close, but I would like to. It would be really nice if we could actually have all of those ducks in a row. The only one that we won't and we don't have any control over is the biggest centerpiece because the city has to negotiate the tower up on the city has to negotiate that contract with U.S. Sailor. We don't even have any negotiation power with that. I did send Ashley yesterday um, our suggested add-ons to their contract, um, but when they get that process through is out of our hands. I, I hope we remind them of how many calls we take for them every month. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Madam Chair. Hold one moment, the Sheriff. It's gonna... not, in, in our conversations with Ashley, it's They're not, very supportive. It's not, it's not lost on them, the importance of that power to mm -hmm. the city. It's, okay. So, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. Uh, Supervisor Voice, go ahead. Um, I agree with Darren. I'd like to see, maybe this is kind of simplifying it, but every month I kind of like to see what have we spent and what have we spent it on, along with a timeline on this so we know where we are. Sometimes it just feels like this is really scattered and we don't, aren't keeping track right or something. It's just my opinion that I think that we need something uh, to see. So I, I I, I don't disagree. I think that I don't know if we need it every month, but maybe every other month as as things come in, it would be nice to have an update. Um, I I do feel that Mike and Barb and the people involved in the project they do actually know. They meet every. Are you still meeting every week? Uh, they meet every week or more. or more. They're on the phone constantly. We just aren't in on those conversations. So to us, we don't necessarily know all the pieces that are right. going on. Um, but I I do think it would be worth the. Mike's time and, and Barb's time to, to at least give us some update of where we are in the spending and, and what's been done and not done and how it, how much it costs. That I just feel like that's just due diligence on our part since it is taxpayer money. Okay. Anything else on that? All right. Thanks, Mike, for your time. Um, Thank you. Will you be able to become or WebEx with us next month and hopefully tell us that the DDR is because that really, when the DDR is signed, that's when we know everything, correct? I mean, that's really what we've been working towards. Well, no, let's, yeah, let's make sure. Uh, so DDR gives us this, the radio system design that we're going to move forward with. So keep in mind, especially with Greenfield sites here, we've got some regulatory work. Um, the, the question will be, when can we really put a, a, a request for bid on the streets for that work? You know, do... Do we want to do it before we actually have completed all the regulatory processes? I think we will in this case, because I think some of those could drag on. So we, we would have some risk there, but um, for the most part, we get a contractor. The contractor would tell us what it would cost it, as long as the, you know, the regulatory process plays its way through and gets approval. Um, you know, nothing really changes with the contractor. So. Um, that's a balance. I don't. I don't necessarily see that that bid going out. Um, probably August is what I'm thinking. July, maybe August, sometime frame. It just again depends on what when we want to pull the trigger and say we're comfortable that uh, you know we're just waiting for um, the federal government to stamp our our application process and you know it, it's probably not going to change because we we feel like we've you know, past most of their hurdles already, so. So we would be pretty confident that we're going to get SEC approval, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we we know a lot of things. With a new tower, there's there's an FC there's an FAA approval process. So they're you know they're kind of the ones that really can derail stuff. The other thing is the historical piece. You know, you know, is this site got some type of historical um, importance? And and now we've got to you know adjust or or prove that it's not as historically important as they think. So NEPA process is same thing for building buildings. And so those two things, you kind of feel like once you, you've seen those agencies come back and approve things that really it's just a matter of getting it across somebody's desk and having them assign a, a tower um, site number. So you, you feel comfortable going out to bid um, requests with those. And again, if something changes, you just have to work with your contractor to say, okay, we got to move the tower over here. Is that, you know, any small additional costs and why would that be, um, you know, this is, easier to build or harder to build and those kind of things. So okay. small things. All right. That sounds good. All right. Thank you for your time, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate it. Right. All right. That brings us back to item number 15, discussion on ordinance 89.7 and possible changes. So, um, so I brought my computer today so that I could actually make changes. Are we prepared to make some changes today or, or at least discuss if we want to make changes? I did. Oh, I, I so I did send it all to Mike Wendell. He's looking over the questions that I have, but I don't think what he's doing will have any. We can still do. We can start figuring out what changes we'd like to make, and it won't have any bearing on what he's doing. He's just checking my work essentially, um, and helping me answer some questions. He suggests that he says there's two possibilities. One is we just amend this ordinance. Um, and the other would be we just repeal it and replace it with, depending on how many how many substantive changes we want to make. So I guess that's um, up to us. If you know, if we just make a few minor changes, if we're only changing the part where it's about the interviews, then maybe we just do an amendment. But if we're going to try to make some more substantial changes, then maybe we just repeal it and replace it. So are we are we wanting to go through this today? And make some suggestions or I mean, I think we should start with the sheriff's department. I was thinking that that makes the most sense to know where you guys are at. Yeah, so why don't we start there? I mean, there's two ways we could do it. One, I can just ask you what areas you want to change, or two, we can just go point, point by point, and if anyone finds something they want to change. So we could do it that way, too. It's committee's preference. You tell me what you want. Boys and girls. i just like to hear the edits. I think at this point, that's a good place to start. Sure. Yeah, okay. Sure. All right. So you let me know where you're at first, and then I'll... I can't hear him. Oh, is your mic not on? Sorry, Barb. Um, so <laughs> why, don't, why don't you grab that mic and then you both can be talking. Right? Yeah, I'm the, assuming you're... the obvious, <laughs> um, just some small tidy like things is law enforcement community is now public safety. Committee. Right, that's easy. Yeah. Um, sheriff's department, sheriff's office, stuff like that. Oh, you, um, you would prefer to be called yeah, sheriff's office. Sheriff's office? Yeah. Not department? Um, why? Just out of curiosity. Well, it's. Aren't you guys SD? Her? RCSD. Actually, actually, it depends on where you look. Yeah. Um, because the state calls us SO. Um, oh, they do. Okay. It's, it's a, um, I guess a historical thing, as it's not a not a subcommittee of a county in itself or county government, and that it's an office of an elected official. Oh, so. okay. Change so change LEJC to public safety. Yep, that's easy. And then change sheriff department to office. Um, we have committee consist of five members now. You guys yeah. of seven members. That one I can make right now. Where is that one? That is yeah, it's right at the top uh, under committee a. five members. Yep. yep. All right. So let me get into. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. So, and I think that takes us down to, oh, uh, 
yeah, never mind. Uh, task force deputy. So which, just let me know which. We're, I think we're still in section one, um, subsection D. 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 Oh, yeah, types of positions. Yeah. Okay. Number five. So task force deputy number six. is number six. Oh, number five. So yeah, well, I, at some point it got changed to May, but I think you do deputize all your, don't. you don't. Oh, okay, so it is May. Should be May. Okay, yeah. all right, that's good to have that question answered. So, and then I guess that was, I was curious about that as well and I had a discussion with Aaron about that yesterday because in our list of edits to 89.7, I don't see 1991.12 anywhere. So I have it. Okay, all right, I'd be curious to see it. Okay, so, yeah. I can send that one to you. Thank you. Um, and then task force deputy, um, that was, that was removed and I'm, I'm questioning, was that the one that 2014 was, was it, it, was it improperly removed? Was it yeah. done by resolution and not okay, by hold on. Let me go to my document that says what the heck happened here. Cause it was removed from the contract and I think it was supposed to be removed from the ordinance at that same time. So it was done by resolution though, not by. So that was my question. I think that was the problem. That was what? my question. There was one in there somewhere that was done by resolution. Um, so I don't, see, so you said 2014? I believe 2014, 2014, 2015. Yeah, yeah. It's when Jim and Chad were in right. office. So all I have from 2014, yeah, and all I have in 2014 is changing mail dispatcher numbers. Um, and then there was a step 10F, 10G added, and they deleted some language. Um, so that's all, all the records I have from 2014. But it would have been, if it was a resolution, so if it was improperly done by resolution, then I would not necessarily know about it. Um, I do have, so there's one, oh, wait, 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 never mind, 2015, resolution 2015-43, oh, sorry, um, we changed some titles of position, task force officers to deputy sheriff in the MOU for union negotiations, do those title changes need to be changed in the ordinance? So by resolution, we changed the titles in our MOU, but we never changed it in the ordinance. Yeah, and then in 2020, by resolution, we added a jail or dispatcher position, but never amended 89.7. So, um, oops, I keep touching the screen and it's not a touch screen. Um, <laughs> because I was using the, the iPad a minute ago. All right, so, so what is the title supposed to be? We no longer have task force, force deputies. deputies. You uh, so we just changed that over to a deputy. Yeah, right. you roll those numbers. Yeah. You roll those numbers. Okay, so actually, I'm going to deputy. So we need to. So I'm going to just put a note in here that on here that we need to do this. So we need. So the ordinance would need to be changed. Correct. So. Mm -hmm. let's fix it. Let's see it. Change ordinance. Okay, got it. So this would actually just be deleted, and then I would add a number. You would add. So I would delete it there. And then under E for full time road control. Yeah, duties, that would just so the be fourteen instead of eleven. So there's three. Okay. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna delete this. Might as well. So we'll make that change, and we'll add. So it'd be fourteen road patrol. Correct. Right. Yeah. I'm doing the math right. And then we will delete this. All right, got it. So, next one. And then uh, obviously then you delete number eight underneath E as well, because it talks about full-time task force deputies. So you Remove yep. That. Got that. And I added up. Yeah, I added it up to the sheriff or to yep. the deputy. And then actually on seven, it says full time dispatcher, either male or female. Um, that should be two instead of one. So that's the problem with the resolution. So in 2020, it was a resolution that 
Um, so in resolution 23, it added a jail dispatcher position, did not indicate male or female, so I assume either isn't fine, but it, but it, it was a resolution, not the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So um, we need to also change this in the ordinance then, right? We still have one, two, three, four, and we still have four. Okay. All right. Then under number 10, it just shows part time clerk typist. But yeah. Sue's been yeah. full time since I've been here. Yeah. So I don't know when that language changed because it's not, I didn't see any or I didn't see any amendments that changed that. Mm -hmm. And I thought the same thing that that position has been full time for a very long time. So that language Change would be changed. Time. Yes. Um, so. Would be a change. Okay. Next one. I was just asking Clay if the total number of full time positions is correct in here. Then if it's at thirty one, it should. I mean, I guess that probably needs to be changed. Yeah, because be changed. that'll go up as well. There would be a full time number. Well, we would we would lose the. Although I thought we also have oh we have a casual. Does that have to be included? The well, casual typist. I mean, I don't know if we're utilizing that. We, yeah, we haven't been. Yeah. But we have that position in our budget, right? Uh, no, we took we it out of budget. budget. Oh, yeah, there it is. So, oh, so we, and it, yeah, the next one just says based on needs. So, so that would change it to 32, and we would just delete the part time and leave number, whatever number this is now, nine. Casual and temporary employees may be called in by the sheriff, chief deputy, or lieutenant to work. As needed, so it doesn't sound like we've ever counted the casual call or the temps. The casuals, yeah. As I mean, I don't know. Does that part-time typist count as a casual? Number ten on here? Or are you talking about? No, who we? I mean, we we've in the past we had wanted to bring in someone to help. We did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this becomes 32 and this becomes zero and we'll delete it. Actually, I should just delete it. Okay. So 32 would be the correct number to put in there then for yep. full-time position. Yep, got it. And I would just delete the part-time position one. And then, then we'll go down to, what section is this in now? Um, Procedures and standards for hiring new personnel. Yeah. So section two, uh, well, this this section, sorry, procedures and standards, it would be um, D1. Shall be a, the applicant shall become a resident of Richland County within 30 days of its flight. We can't do that anymore, right? Right. Yeah. After Act 10? Right. You can do a 15 mile from the jurisdictional boundary, but do we want to do that or do we just leave it out? It's so. I, <laughs> you don't want to limit yourself to anything. I mean, we need all miles and you can't do something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I it's think like, just delete it. Yeah. Well, I, I think some so, agencies have been doing response time instead of mileage. Yeah. Do so, all of our current deputies live in the county? No. So this isn't talking about making like a traffic stop outside of the county. No, just, this, is no this is where they live. It's a residency, which we aren't allowed to oh. do anymore. So I'm just going to delete it. Yeah. Okay. I think we still want them to be a high school graduate, correct? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And not less than 18. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was there anything else from that section that you guys? No. Next one I have is section five. I don't know if it was section five. Or What's the competitive examination thing administered by the, is, this is part five of so that. Com same. Competitive examination is what I wanted to talk about. Right here, yeah. That uh, uh, provided by the Department of Administration. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. That county exam exists. That's what I thought. Yeah. Did they used to have a state exam? They had uh, Wisconsin Personnel Partners, which was a Wisconsin run 
a state run testing thing. Um, it's been gone for two or three years now. So now we use the different tests though, right? Because well, you that we've made up. So. What about the the scores that you were always showing us? That a, that's a test that we created. So there's the PEP test, which is the personality profile. Right, yeah. and that's and that's a private company that does that. And okay. It's a test that we wrote ourselves. A written test. We've used other companies for like the lieutenant exams and sergeant exams, but for an actual road so test. So how do we want to word? Because we still want them to take some kind of test, correct? I think it could still be a competitive, competitive examination. examination just but just delete the specifics of, yeah. because we don't know, because that doesn't exist anymore. And, and do you want me to leave it at county expense in there? And is that still in accordance with 5921-8A? I don't know what 5921-8A is. Well, that's the county board statute. Um, I mean, it must say something about it. Well, here, I guess we can just click with. Yeah, you're good at that, Carrie. You want to look up 5921-8A? it says here so it would read as appropriate shall take a competitive examination at county expense in accordance with section 59218a wisconsin statutes so except that nothing in this paragraph shall prevent the share there is no sub -A. it went away yeah, so you have to look back to but if it's cross -reference. But it's not there now, so wouldn't that mean we can't have it in here? It would have became a different number. They would have read it. Yeah, 5921 goes to sub 4 now. And it's official oaths and bonds. So. Just redone just like two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Just to show you where we got a patient. Uh, 2011 was the last time it was redone. Yeah. So. I should delete this statement and just say that we want them to take a, count, a competitive exam. I would say that would be the best way yeah. to do it. Right? I mean, why why do we even need to reference that? Exactly. Uh, period. Yeah. I know okay. a lot of the departments have actually even stopped for jail or dispatchers even having them take exams because they can't get enough people to even apply. So, would it be section 165 that has to do with hiring? 165 has to do with hiring? It is 59, it's all county. Yeah. 65 is specific to hire. Oh. I guess we should make sure that. Okay. All right, so I deleted that. Um, we have met the requirements. So, what about that next? So, I don't know how we numbered that. I fixed that later. So, in six, Under one, we can look at 165.85 under that uh, is requirements for standard board certification recruitment, stuff like that. So you want to check through that and just make sure that we're yeah. Yeah. crossing all our T's and dotting our I's? Okay. All right. Next section, as far as uh, section B for successful applications must score 70% on a test or higher. Yep. I think we, I mean, I'd hate, I hate to get rid of it, but at the same time. <laughs> Are we lowering <laughs> our standard? I think we need to get rid of it for a lot of higher people. Oh, boy. Or we make a test really simple that uh, oh boy. everybody can pass. So that, and that's for all employees, all certified employees, jail, road, but not uh, telecommunicators are because they're also jail. Well, are jail deputized? No. Yeah. Some. The, the ones that are the ones that are certified law enforcement. So, so this can go back and forth from road patrol. Yeah, yeah. So this is basically a test because there isn't an official one out there. They've gotten their certifications. This is just something Richland County is doing. Yeah, as, a, as an evaluation. As an evaluation. So we can make up anything that we'd want to. We could call it the PEP. We could call it. I mean. So well, that isn't it's not a pass fail, really. It's just recommendations about their personality, correct? Right. Correct. Um, but the other exam, the you, written it, exam, you do score it. We score it, <laughs> but 
I, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree that it should go. I mean, there's got to be some basics of knowing that we've set a standard, whether it's whether it's typing or something. I mean. That's why you go through the schools. Oh, she was asking if she would pass. I don't know if she would pass the time. That's how we wrote it. We wrote it so someone could pass it, but I just don't. Well, we can let you have it, but there's there's also like memorize there's a memorization portion on the test, and people had difficulty, so we actually reduced the number of questions for memorization. The photos? Yeah. The images? Yeah. And scores went up a little bit, but people I have, would, people have would, trouble uh, with the not, fractions and, and basic math and English questions. So. I would recommend still maintaining a 70% but changing the test. I see it in the, the journeyman's plumber's test, the master plumber test. It evolves over time, goes up and down with the pool that you have to work with. But it always stays at 70% because if somebody goes online and looks at, they're like, Jesus, look at Richardson County. You only get, get a half more on and be a cop. You know, it's like. That, most agencies don't require tests anymore. So. Well, then let's delete it. I'm just, I'm just saying, what if we have three openings and we get five candidates and no one passed the test? Then we're not going to move forward with those applicants. Then you redo the test. Take it out of here, but you guys can still do the test. We can't. I mean, just because we say don't say you, that you I think we will still do the test, but I don't think we necessarily have to put the standard of seventy percent on the test. I mean, we can grade on the curve. I don't know. They must take the test. Yeah, and that's what the whole competitive the test is at. Must pass a test, but not put a percentage on it. <laughs> I mean, it seems ridiculous because when we all went, I mean, we all had passed the test, but things have changed. I just don't know. Yeah. How about attain a, a satisfactory score? And what do we put as a assessment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's when you use your judgment to determine whether someone who isn't a good test taker could still be a good uh, and, and I, 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 know. I really appreciate this conversation, and I, I'm hoping that um, uh, the current Sheriff Porter stays a long time. My concern here is, and the next sheriff or the next situation that comes up where they're just hiring anybody because there isn't a test and they have a certification, you know, where, where do we set that standard? I think that standard needs to be set. I like the 70. Do we need to alter the test and then at least have that administration have some responsibility for that is my book. I guess to go along with your comments, uh, I mean, we, I mean, I think we can observe and we find out a lot more information like with interviews. I mean, like for jail dispatch, we make them take several different tests, you know, as far as, you know, uh, you. typing tests, we make them oh. read, uh, memorize, like being able to multitask. I mean, it's not an actual test, but we kind of, score them while they're doing things. So, I mean, there's lots of stuff there to kind of ID if they're actually a good candidate. But, I mean, we can take a test. I can make a test that everybody can pass, but is that really gonna, exactly. what's the benefit of doing that? Instead of just, you know, saying they take a test, we get their scores and then we make a decision what we want to do based off of everything else they do. You can hire anybody that you want. Well, according uh, to this, they have to pass the score. Well, according to this guy, can pass, pass a test that doesn't exist, but. <laughs> right, but you can you can say, you don't have to take a test. I want you as my deputy. I'm deputizing you today. Not a But I think that's why this ordinance was put into place so that There's the they, have to some, they have to meet some criteria before you can just deputize. No. See, by law, just, you can deputize anyone you he want. Can do I get it. Any, but, at any time. You can hire whoever you want. Well, we're not smart enough. <laughs> but deputizing and be, having somebody be a legitimate two different 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 criteria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I mean this is a quadri. I don't know what I I mean I don't want to lower the standard either, but I mean essentially what I'm hearing from you is that we may not have any applicants then. And then what do we do? Is having zero better than having one bad? And I 
think the answer might be having zero. Having zero, but but yeah. then I but then I want you to come to my house if I'm having a, an emergency and if there's no deputies on, you know. So I, there used to be a physical requirement too for jail staff and road to pass, and the physical requirements for the jail has completely gone away. So is it saying that we're hiring worse candidates in the jail because we're not having them do a physical agility test now? No agency has physical agility tests for the jail dispatch center. A lot of them don't do them for patrol anymore. So, I mean, we haven't went that far yet. But, but they do their physical agility and they do that during the academy, right? They, well, so, yes, they have to, they have to complete a physical readiness test to enter the academy and they have a stricter standard to graduate. Um, but, you know, you're hiring somebody who's been 10 years out of the academy somewhere else that may not be able to. I feel that the physical standards for the academy are pretty good. But, but there are some law enforcement officers out there that probably wouldn't be able to pass the physical agility test. For sure. I know. I'm not saying in this department, but I'm saying out there. Do we make them do the physical thing every year after you've hired them or just to get through the academy? And when you we, we, if we set a requirement to pass a physical agility test, we would also have to allot time for them to work out. And if they got hurt, even if it was outside of their duties working here, like they went home, but they were working out to be able to meet the requirements, then, then they can claim workman's cap for that, that injury. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. So getting back to the 70% score, <laughs> your recommendation is to lower it or delete it, or what is your actual recommendation? I mean, right now, I, it already says that they have to take a competitive exam. So from that exam, we can see what the scores are, and then we can grade it on the curve. So if you know the top person gets a 80%, that's now the 100%, and then we could actually then have some candidates that would actually qualify as a pass score. So in your experience, the people that you have, um, that have taken this exam that have gotten less than 70%, do you feel that some of them would have been good deputies? We've, we've hired, yeah, I, <laughs> how much I should say here? We've hired people that have not done as well on a, an exam as I would have. And then they before. turned out to be excellent and employees. To be good deputies. So I mean, that's. Or we'll, or just don't even say anything. Couldn't you say applicants may be administered a test? Well, no, I think we want to say that they can, they are, they have to take the test. It's just how it's graded, which is in that next paragraph. So the question, I oh. guess, is, do we want to just? I think we just put. I think, um, I would recommend just crossing that section out as far as deleting the whole the seventy percent, and if it's going to be on there, they're taking a competitive examination. Obviously, the sheriff so and myself e. will know. Yeah. Very, yeah, I agree. Just delete E, and then will you use your discretion? I mean, I'm assuming that if they did incredibly badly on that test, but also you could tell in the rest of your things that they would not make a good deputy. That you don't care what the score is, you would not. Even if they got a ninety and they didn't do well on all of the other things, you would not hire them. Correct. I mean, that's why we have so many different steps that we have them go through. Right. I mean, that way it gives us the opportunity to see, you know, if they can do the requirements of the job. And some and good people, people just can't take tests. That doesn't mean they're not going to have that happen many times. Some people who can take good tests take, once they go to place. They, they want it's, some background. Exactly, that's exactly true. <laughs> There was a time that you said that I think it was a, the PEP test that you learned the scores from that, that when you started hiring people that were down in the lower percentile, that PEP score that you noticed improvement where the work ethic was not as good as it was with people with the higher score on the PEP test. You, you learned that that one time. So, yeah, there's, 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 there's some science behind that, that PEP test to where um, it's it's, it's a, as much a interviewing and uh, background investigation tool as it is a personality profile. If you if you choose to use it that way, um, but yeah, there's generally like they have like data that would suggest that somebody below this score on the PEP test, um, you're gonna have some struggles with them versus people who are very high like. Sometimes even too high, they're like, well, too high is also a flag. Too high right? can also be a flag. 
So, yeah, because it, it's based on how they perceive themselves, how they answer their questions, basically. So, you know, if they, some people might perceive themselves to be something they're not. So and, essentially in this current climate, we are probably choosing to hire people that 15 years ago would never have even made it to the interview process, but because of where we are, we're working with those people. So are, do you feel like we do additional training to get them up to speed or? I just think the pool base is completely different. I mean, different. And I mean, small. Yeah. And I mean, very, I, very small. When I got hired, there was 50, well, 54 people that passed the physical and written test that passed it. Right. And now we get maybe five, six applicants for a road position. Right. No, I know. So, I mean, I think just your pool is so much smaller. And I, I just think that these younger generation now, they, they don't, I mean, shouldn't be saying younger generation, I'm young too, but I mean, they, I don't know if they comprehend things like we did back when we were going through it. I mean, it's a, <laughs> just a little bit different time. So in my mind, what that means is that we need to train differently because we have a totally oh, different do. pool. 100%. So that, I mean, I think that's where we need to cover ourselves in making sure that it's very well established what additional training we are doing to to bring those people that don't come in quite where they should be up to where we need them to be so we're not having issues on the road yeah we train i would say significantly differently than we did when aaron and i started that it's I much had, more intensive uh, yeah yeah it's so um, through an all-day policy reading um, well, no, not even just that, not just, just the, the training of, um, field training. Like, for, do they, do they ride time. along with someone for a longer period of time? When Aaron and I do like two weeks of field training, I saw the email from the sheriff where I had seven days of road training. And then you were on your own. Yeah, I was on my own. Oh my goodness. And, and, so, and how long is it now? Yeah. Yeah. Bob, so now we're doing 12, it's a 12 week oh, program. So, so. Okay. So, I mean, so we've adjusted. We So even though we appear to be lowering our standards, but we're also then increasing yeah, our training. You know, to your comment earlier, lowering your, lowering your standards, there, there are always those people that are just bad test takers. That's true. And Absolutely. Be before, they didn't get an interview because they didn't make it past that point. Which was cutting out some vi very yeah. viable people who probably would have been amazing yeah. at the job. No, I agree. I think there's a way to balance it, but we do want to make sure that we're not hiring complete and uh, yeah completely I, unqualified you don't want that either <laughs> so because that makes it just job. makes your job a nightmare job a yeah okay so i mean i feel pretty comfortable just taking that out and letting you i mean you're the experts you you know what you need and how you need it and so i don't see any reason to leave that in there if we don't need to okay so so i'm deleting that next Oh, so that, that would also change step two of the hiring process, um, which also I think calls for the. So. Isn't that just the criminal record pursuant to? I don't know which one was. Uh, well, it does say step three, state of Wisconsin competitive exam, which will be administered in court in accordance with section 5921. That, that has to be deleted because that doesn't exist. Yeah. Should I just delete, should I just say, why are we repeating this? Why? This oh, it's just the, the steps. steps okay. The so we would just say the competitive, I would delete the state of Wisconsin and just say competitive exam and delete the in accordance. Yep. Just It'll just say competitive examination will be administered, yep. period. Okay. And you're still doing the physical agility test? Yes. And then you're doing the... For the not for the jail district, not for the jail. So does this distinguish between the two? It doesn't. You probably need to in here. So for all non-management positions in Richland County Sheriff's Department, so that's the section we're in. So how do we, do we want to change it at D where it says minif minimum qualifications for all road patrol deputies, all non-management positions, no, how do we say that? Just say road patrol deputies, isn't it just road patrol deputies that we're talking about? Road patrol deputies would still be required to take physical agility tests, pass their physical agility tests. Right. Well, we weren't talking about deleting that. We were only talking about 
or were you talking about deleting that? No, I just think you just put it that the road unless, deputies will pass if there's a collision. Unless we take it out altogether. Because we're still going to make that requirement. That would be part, part of the competitive examination. And then we're not, I guess we're not bound to continuing that practice. But as of right now, I would say that that is going to be part of the practice as part of the, our physical agility test is part of the competitive exam. So, do you make the, the applicants for the jail go through all these same steps except the physical? Is that what you're saying? Okay, so I could just add road patrol deputies will participate in a physical agility test administered by is it us though? Is it a lo it says lo by local physical physical education, health, or other appropriate personnel? So what we've been doing um, oh, this is, is we've been doing we've been using the physical the physical readiness the exit standards from the academy, um, and so we administer that ourselves. And actually, we we've been talking about sending somebody to become a instructor in that so that um, they can count towards other stuff. Our tests can count to so stuff. Should I should I just say a physical agility test administered by the sheriff's department, sheriff's office? Yeah. May you want the words may in there? May be administered by. Oh, in or case will be administered. Because will makes you think that you have to do that, or may would give you the opportunity. I don't foresee us getting rid of that, but no, I think we're still. Fine I, with it. So what I have is road patrol deputies will complete. A physical agility test administered by the sheriff's office. Well, just the whole sheriff's sheriff office. Or, yeah, or point here. I mean, just to give yourself some flexibility. Sheriff's designee. That's the way it was written the other day. Designee. Um, sheriff's designee. <laughs> okay. All right. Got it. So that brings us to step five. First oral interview by following law enforcement personnel. Is this how you do? Is this what you do? No, that's, I was reading down through here at the bottom. It says, like, under I. Um, maximum interview shall be six, one member from each of these categories above. And we don't, I mean, normally the lieutenant's there, Designate. I'm there. Designate, yes. But normally we just like make a panel of whatever department. So if it's a jail dispatch, there's a panel of jailer dispatchers by seniority that sit in there, plus the lieutenant myself, sometimes play steps in, but we don't have all these people like this. Supervisory personnel from another law enforcement agency. I mean, we've never had. I mean, actually, since my interview, I don't think we've ever had anyone sitting there. So, but if I delete that, does the rest of it make sense? And and really, it's so you do a minimum interviews that shall be three chosen from A through G. That's probably, it's yeah. probably three to four people each time. Well, I'd have to. Minimum of three people, maximum of six people from so a, from the from a panel from the, the from the sheriff um, appointed by the sheriff or the designee. So the sheriff can make a panel. So I would get rid of A through J and just make a statement. Yeah, I think that's the best way to handle. Um, interview panel will consist of will consist of. Three to five people, five to what's the what's the range? Three to six. Three to six people. Three to six, six people six appointed by the sheriff. Appointed by the sheriff. Or designee. That way, if Clay's not around, I could, or Mike could, if we're both not here, could appoint the panel for some reason if we're not around. Um. Well, panel will consist of three to six people from the sheriff's department. Or do you want to leave that bag? I mean, you could always bring in someone from, like, from the city police department. Just maybe. Yeah. So just leave it vague, and I won't say from where. I'll just say three to, appointed by the sheriff or designee. Yeah. Okay, so now I've deleted. I'm deleting all of A through J, and it just says first oral interview by the following law enforcement person. Well, I'm just going to even say, I'm just going to delete that and say. Uh, first oral interview panel will consist of three to six people appointed by the sheriff or designee. Yep. Does that sound? That's good. Sounds good. Where are we at on here? Um, so it's step five of section two. 
What page? Um, I think it's going to be page five of nineteen. Yeah, I think so. Or four. From what? Four or five. Six. Uh, first okay. oral interview. Five and nineteen. Yeah, so first oral interview panel will consist of three to six people appointed by sheriff or designee, and I'm deleting the rest. Okay. And then that brings us to step six. When do we ever have five highest ranking? We're lucky to get five total. So I wonder what were your thoughts on this whole six, seven, and eight? I don't think we want to send a ton of people on to you correct Clay if you want something different, but I'd say I mean five people. But yeah, lots of, maybe things will change and a lot yeah. of people will come apply again. Hopefully. And so five makes sense. So I mean I, I mean we can five. do less than five if we want. I mean, right? I guess I think five is a good number. The sorry, can you I think this and this is an area I think we, we actually we we had talked a few times that we wanted to address. Um, and I guess, how do we want to continue doing this interview this way? Yes. Because I know oh, you've mentioned. I was just saying we lost quorum, but we're good still. I mean, do you want to keep doing the. Do we need to be in, in the interview process? Because I don't mind doing it this way. I just, I just feel like the time it sometimes. slows down a little, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do. And I do think that I'm not sure how helpful we are. I don't know if we can just paint a public safety committee. Um, Maybe just a member of a public safety committee needs to be part of the final interview. What is the what are the committee's thoughts? That's kind of what I was thinking. Bob, do you have an opinion on on our interviewing of candidates? What what if we had just a, a representative, but like one representative from the committee participate in the interview or something? I think that's fine. I think there should be some public input or or um, like in case there's some kind of just a question issue. I think, yeah, I, I think it's good for the public to know that 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 that's a piece of the hiring process. But yeah, but there's I think a public official. Or, yeah, I agree. Even then, across the road for like. Like a regular clerical staff, there's like we're not involved in it. But if it's a higher management position, then like one member of the board, there's a hiring committee person that they would sit in on those interviews, like a manager. But if it was like the administrator part of it, then it was like it. Then all then it gets a lot bigger. Well, and that's true of higher management there too. But we're currently even the lowest positions we're mm -hmm. involved with. And it has to, uh, you have to have at least a right. forum to do it too. So. We do, which gets to be a struggle sometimes. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, is there any, does anyone know the background as to why, why the law enforcement committee started insisting on being in the interview? So I did put a, a note out to the um, uh, former chief deputy, Tom Haugen, uh, who helped write most of this. He has not gotten back to me on that. Um, I know he was, had his boat out, so that could have something to do with it. Um, but a, a lot of that was written prior to many of the certification requirements for the jail uh, and for the road. So there were there were some standards that were set, but none of them were, were tight state standards. And so we went through a vetting process to make sure people met certain criteria. So that you uh, couldn't just bring in someone off the street. Right, yeah, and, and previous sheriffs um, would do that. They would bring in their friends, their family, their whoever to fill a position and do this and that. So that was kind of put in place to uh, make the process more transparent. Um, I think since certifications and, and requirements have come up, that has changed uh, a lot. And I think that's- Right, the state speaking. has taken over the making sure people are qualified. Right. Because all of our deputies have to pass the academy, right? Correct. So even if they don't pass our entrance, and if if they wouldn't pass the academy, then they would not be able to be employed. Correct. correct? So any so even so, like the, the example would be, we hire somebody as a law enforcement officer, as a patrol deputy, who has not been certified. If if we send them to the academy, and they don't complete their their probation period. I believe as the contract is wrote right now, 
but their we'll probation period doesn't start until they graduate the academy. So, so then we have another is it a year? Then we have another year to vet that. them. Yeah. So like if they didn't graduate the academy, that would be our okay. We're gonna go our separate ways. The state you, can you be a law enforcement without passing the academy? Uh, Were you are you allowed to hire someone who it's not? Yes, we can hire somebody. They just have to go to the academy within so many. Months. But let's say they don't go, then you wouldn't be able to keep them. You wouldn't be able to keep them, correct. By state, would, by some sort of state law. Yeah. But how does that, so I'm just. We would probably risk decertifying the department at that point, I think. But then yeah, the sheriff. Sure. <laughs> but so, you as a sheriff, you can hire, any, but you can deputize anyone you want. So I, it's a little confusing. Well, to me. yeah, and deputizing is not the same as, as law enforcement certification. So it's deputizing, so. right, you can, you can deputize them to be a crossing guard, but they're not carrying a gun. But they have some authority under the sheriff. So really, your your ability to deputize people has very little teeth. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just being blunt. Yeah, but no, it's <laughs> I guess it's a it's a it's a muddy. I'm sure there are sheriffs that probably push that envelope I in mean, some counties. Oh, back to the day of the posse and right. Even now, though, I'm sure there are there are sheriffs who don't see eye to eye with their county board to do things just to. Or the pot. Yeah, you, you could you could deputize just for paper service and and not yeah. give them yeah. a gun, but they could still have arrest powers. Now, why you would want to do that would be so dangerous. Somebody they have arrest powers. Yeah. And so that's where. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. So hear you, Barb. Pardon. So we can hear you. Yeah, just a second. Oh, she must yeah. be talking to someone else. Okay, so Better. let's just move on, I guess. But um, so. You want to leave six, seven, and eight as written? Is that what I'm hearing? I think we should leave six in there as far as you know, five highest ranking applicants. So we okay. can go on to the next process. And the underground background checks, reference yeah, checks, seven, neighborhood yeah. inquiries. What? Yeah, you talk to the neighbors. Interesting. We can. <laughs> so Toby does our background investigation, and he literally has. There's, I mean, he went to background investigation school, and there's packets of papers and. Stuff you fill out uh, to, to all the information to get as much information from the candidate's life as possible. So interesting. Okay, what about number seven then? I mean, it says they have to take the exam within twelve months of the date of. What does that mean? They have to take who have not taken the exam within twelve months of the date of certification. That's time talking about the certification as far as law enforcement certification. I, Twelve months. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's kind of a weird paragraph. It kind of rambles. So no person shall cert shall be certified as one of the highest ranking applicants who has not taken the exam within 12 months of the date of certification. Well, I'm talking about the oh, test oh, back, yeah, the year. Unless the, year. the law enforcement committee has extended the time interval between taking the exam. Yeah, the test is good for a year. State, so State we just State. leave that. We can leave that because we still use. It's your test. Well, it could be our test. It could be the physical agility test. Because okay. The same thing. That test is good for a year, so we could use. The so they don't have to band. redo it. Yeah, they won't have to redo it. Okay. And what about eight? Vacancy occurs. Law enforcement determines. Vacancy shall be filled from the step six. Yeah, that'll change. I'll change um, that throughout. I guess that's probably talking about like, so we move through the process, somebody leaves, we already have our top five candidates. We can just start at step six and move forward with the hiring process. So again, we'd have to change this, that it's interviewed by the law enforcement committee and the sheriff or his designee. It would just be, shall be interviewed by a member of law enforcement committee and the sheriff. Well, I'm not sure why the five applicants would have to be re-interviewed. I know. Yeah. I feel like we've given you permission to just go yeah, ahead and hire Yeah, I think after five the applicants, list. the sheriff can, always done. and that's the way it's been. Well, I don't think we've ever brought the so five candidates back to I, five to interview them again. So was there a pool, though? Like, if you had that, then there was, like, an eligibility list? Is that what they're referring to? So, here? so the way we've been, I will say the way we've been doing it for the last several years, even, is that if, let's say, we have, we got lucky we had 10 people, if if you interviewed the top five and you said we like them go ahead we just 
roll the next person up. Which we've when done. Vacancy. We've done the same thing. Not re-interviewed. Not re each time. But the top five were gone, then we would re re-interview the, the other candidates if we yeah. still needed to. So, so I don't think we need to re-interview anyone that was already approved by in the, the top final five. interview process. So should I delete step eight? Is that what we're saying? I would say that you could delete, yeah, step eight. Uh, we filled by appointment from the sheriff from names provided in step eight while well, we're just deleting step eight, so. I mean, I guess what you're saying is we want to still retain, you want to retain the right that once we've, once we've designated, let's say, the top five, and we've interviewed them and we say they're all good, we rank them, but here's the top five, and then one and two get hired, but then six months later quit, then you can go ahead without having to do anything, hire three, four, and five. Correct. Once Maybe we should make that step nine, is that vacancies will be filled by appointment of the sheriff um, if they've completed, successfully moved on from the final interview? Um, or if they're, that? if they're the, or step six, the five highest ranking applicants? Yeah. Yep. From step six? Yeah. There, that fixed it. Okay. Um, and then we want to keep the psychological exam. A psychologist would do a psychologist recommendation after their psych eval. They they send us a sheet that oh, says if okay. this person. So it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Okay. It's just a report from A. Correct. Mm -hmm. I don't know why there's. Oh. And then a physical exam yep. and completion of the employee's probationary period. Yep. Okay. Um, and then an F. It just needs to remove the task force task part force. of the union. Yeah. Got it. Anything else in that paragraph? It's a long paragraph. It's oh, it's talking about if they don't pass. Oh wait, uh, approved as a law enforcement by the state of Wisconsin Board of State. Oh, that's the it just talks about that the they have to be certified. Under the state of Wisconsin. Okay, and if they don't, we can fire them. Yep. Okay, well, that seems logical. Anything else? And what about G? Uh, Part-time road patrol. Well, we don't have part-time. We have casual road patrol deputies. Should I change that to casual? Just remove the part-time and, and put casual? I could put part-time slash casual. That way, if we ever have part-time, they'd be covered. I think you're better off doing yeah. that. <laughs> Given how we love updating our, our ordinances, um, show me. And it even says the position of part-time or casual role for de pull deputy is certified. Mm -hmm. And that so that makes more sense. Um, okay, full or part-time jailer dispatcher. Does anything need to be changed in that section? Um, no, I think that looks good. Okay. So I don't know about the rest of you, but I have a really busy day. So I was wondering if we could leave it here and we'll we'll just do section by section. Good point. Okay, Good point. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, Is there anything else in the agenda we need to get to before? We have more in the agenda. I thank you. Mapping radio system and squad updates. That's it. Yeah. And you guys saw the squad updates. So. We did. Is there anything you need so to in there? No. No. Okay. Well, I guess we could say that we do have our two new squads that are sitting in the parking lot, That's and good. we got bids back from the 20 2023 the Dodge Durangos. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we got bids back from several places for doing the builds and looking like Gencom's can be the. Mm -hmm. So are these the ones from the 2022 borrowing or the 2023 borrowing? This is from the 2023 Three borrowing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Future agenda items. We'll continue to work on 89.7 and um, the dog ordinance question we'll try to answer. Is there anything else we want to add? I dropped in your folders for the day. Uh, you want to talk into it? Barb dropped into the folders for the day. A copy of the spending report. A copy of the spending report for the Radio Tower Project. Thank you very much. That'll be great information to have. Did you get that, Barb? Voice? Excuse me, I had to mute her. Oh, okay. Oh, so. background. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that brings us to adjournment. I would entertain a motion to approve. I'm sure Randy's second by.
Frank, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So move off to the posse and uh, sit down. Um. <laughs>